every single image is allegorical. And the third element is metaphysical. Metaphysical. So, I, am, am I doing all right so far, Kat? If you would like to add or correct me, please feel free. Okay, honey? Okay, so I'm very proud that I know Catherine, that I am familiar with her art, and I definitely wanted to give you a space of exhibition in this gallery because I'm really proud of her work. So, would you tell us, Kathy, what do you call this? What I see in this painting is a woman, and obviously you all guys see in this painting, a woman with branches deviating from her body. I'm comprising a very, very deep red and bold flower. This is not stylism. This is not mannerism. It's really bold. It's red flower, see? Red, bold as your, as your dress, right? <laughs> so, do you have a name for this painting? I'm sure we all have guys our own interpretations of it. Was, oh. I do, I just have a yeah. hard time remembering. Um, it's just called Disposition. It's called Disposition. disposition. The, would, you, would you make me understand better what exactly is disposing? But it's a time where I was having a difficult time. Oh, it's not a dog. Mm -hmm. And it's just showing a, a portion of my life that I was going through. Ah. And it's just kind of telling you a little story. But I, I know this position is psychological kind of a defense of a human being when he disposes. When he Come on in, come on in, guys. I'm sorry. Well, hey, how are you, man? It's good to see you. Hello, hello. Nice to meet you. That's another artist. Rather remarkable. And also young. Please have a... Come on in there, guys. No, no problem. When we're disposing our internal conflicts on the outside reality, outside the objects? Yes. Is that close? Yes. So, moving forth, right, Kathy? Moving forth to this work, you certainly see elements of serialism. Mm -hmm. You certainly see elements of Dada. You certainly see humongous influence of 20th century art. Yet, look at the body. Body is very, very well drawn. She knows an army of the body. It's important. What created Andy Warhol in America last century, at the end, he knew how to draw. Nobody else knew how to draw. Kathy Shaw knows how to draw a, male, a naked male figure. And now, remarkably enough, there are mythological uh, creatures females, female body with uh, the rest below the umbilicus uh, body of a snake. So this is a male figure with the rest of the body sort of like a cruciferous, like a seahorse. Sea 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 and certain elements of some um, <clears throat> digital art, because Kathy still Despite of transcending times and spaces, oh, that's not good. Uh, transcending times and spaces, Kathy is still living in contemporary times, and so there are elements of many things, elements of many things. And look at this multicolored scale of flowers, line of horizons suddenly gives perspective, not unlike a predecessor of Spanish line, Salvador Dali. So many elements and yet still unique. It's Catherine Tavares. Suddenly a most remarkable talent. Most rem and now I want to pay this. I specifically arranged this exhibition. Catherine, not just one wall for Catherine. Catherine you would see all over the space 
between two major halls of a gallery. Gallery is next to my work, and Catherine, and Catherine next to work, for example, Domenico Conforte, who is Domenico, Domenico Conforte, is professor of art of Italian Academy of Fine Arts, and he is one of the most famous painter of our times. You can compare. The quality is apparent. Congratulations. Honey. Thank you. Proceeding forth, right? Proceeding forth. Unless you want, to, you want to comment on this one? No. Okay, proceeding forth. This probably might be one of my favorites of Kathy. Remarkably interesting. And again, we have sort of female centaur, and yet the torso is not naked. Torso is donned in sort of contemporary clothes. And little girl, and little girl is also dressed up, and she has <clears throat> wings of a butterfly. And wings of butterfly are not primitively harnessed upon her dress. They fuse with her dress, as you see. So they're becoming like her own parts of her own body. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. There are Henry Rousseau, French primitivist, a lion. We all recognize. He all of a sudden comes and he wants to see hey, what's going on. What, what's with the, what's up with this woman? What's up with this baby? I have never seen anything of a sort. I have seen anything in this major in this magical forest, but this and these flowers. Look, they come from underworld. They come from another dimension. This is completely black and white. And you see elements of Andrei Tarkovsky. Are you familiar with Andrei Tarkovsky, no. a famous Russian filmmaker? Not familiar. Not, not familiar. Interesting. It means composition of subjective unconsciousness of geniuses. They meet somewhere in the spheres of other dimensions. So this is remarkable. Kathy, can I ask you to give me a comment on this one, or what you have thought of when you painted it? This one is also another point in my life about moving up, as you see the little um, the little fungus on the tree moving on up, and just moving forward and flowing mm -hmm. with uh, life, like the river. Mm. And the river goes upward, Yes. somewhere in the sky. Yes. And fish is also flying up. <laughs> right, Kat? Going upwards, yes. Good. Now, guys, if any of you have any comments or questions, feel free to pitch in because that's discussion for all of us. And by the way, thank you so much, everybody, for coming in. We're having great moments today. Now, this is another Catherine Tavares. And this Catherine Tavares is, <clears throat> you see, a classical subject, elements of digital art, uh, a male figure, female figure, lovingly in embrace. She is either greeting him coming home from war, or she is saying goodbye to him. My dear husband, look at this network upon my naked body. I'm going to wait for you, in spite of all my sensuality and attractiveness to the world. This is the prison for them. They cannot trespass those, pri those stripes of prison upon my body. And body belongs only to you, my dear husband. And this is our daughter. This is our flesh and blood. This is what unites us in, in this life and in eternity. Now, background is certainly absolutely surrealistic. Surrealistic is both De Chirico and Max Ernst. De Chirico is 20th century Italian surrealist, and Max Ernst is 20th century German surrealist, both in, included into the realm of 20th century surrealism, together with Andrea Breton, Magritte, Salvador Dali. 
And this is a very peculiar, is a picture of a window. It's a window in the outside world, am I right? Yeah. Yes. This is good. Any remarks? This one's called Me, Myself, and I. I really like Me, this Myself, one. and I. Yes. Uh -huh. Being togetherness. It's uh -huh. almost like a premonition of, you know, what I wanted. Is this a black moon with your sign? It's like an eclipse. Sorry? An eclipse. An eclipse. eclipse. Yes. So this eclipse. is the Leo oh, sign? Leo sign, yes. Leo sign. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else would like to ask? Very nice. Moving forward. Ah, by the way, what I wanted to... Oh, yeah, this one. I might think that this actually is also one of my favorites. This one. Uh, Captain, am I right? Uh, somebody, a, a flesh, I mean, there is a child attached to yes, a woman right. with indissoluble ties. Yes, so it's a like becoming sort of like one flesh. Yes. That's that's one of the reasons that I put it over here next to this work of mine. Look how much our minds are thinking, might be thinking alike. Because this painting is called Savior. And this child is coming out of his flesh. This child is not separate, it's part of his flesh. As you know in real life stories of German soldiers saving Russian child during Second World War. They're becoming inseparable in time, they're the same flesh and blood. And, and the same thing we see in Catherine Tavares. So this, they are in, enclosed in blue color and white color, always short. And also what is behind and above them is symbolic like a seashell. Am I right? They're, uh, her wings, they're like a seashell and then the rain is right. coming on on them. So it's yes. almost like the birth of Venus, of Botticelli. And yet Venus is born from separating, cleaving seashell. And she already has a child. Yes. And colors are very, very delicate. And as you see, there is no space. There is just time and gray blue color above and behind. So. What does she have in her feet? This is a ballerina. Where? Where was she in her, you know? Oh, her sandals? Yeah, it's sandals? Yes. Kathy, would you like to say anything else? Well, this was called a mother's love. Mm -hmm. You know, mothers, as you know, they, you know, you do anything for your children. Sometimes you feel like you're down and out. And this one, that, you know, that's what it was all about. Great, great. So, moving, moving to this painting. This certainly is more. On a, on a first glance, upon the first glance, it might be looking like almost contemporary digital work. Uh, and, 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 you know, modern digital uh, images offer viewers sometimes some weird ears or weird creatures. Uh, these ears, or these are horns, rather, Kath, Catherine. They're her arms. No, 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 over here, over her head. Yeah, they're... What's on her head? There are the sleeves. Okay. Yeah, they're part of the sleeves is her arm going over her head and the moon and behind it. Okay. Right, so I see these elements in, 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 in quite a few of your paintings, these elements. And these elements, it, it might be Nereids, it might be ne Nemesis, it might be some 
fantastical nymph attached to the suite of Bacchus, the god of, of wine. Uh, and yet it's still, and it's certainly an element of classical, of digital contemporary visions. And yet again, surrealism is in this mushrooms, mushrooms. In this, in this mushrooms there is certainly phallic symbols, felicity. This mushrooms behind her contradict, contorted, contorted and distorted black, doom-like branches of trees and branches of trees attach. And again, Kathy, are this, are this her hair? Her arm and part of her hair, yes. And where, where is her arm? Her arms are coming up this way here. Ah, which one? Yeah. The arms are ah, oh, I see, I see, and these are still branches of the trees. Yes. So you see, branches of the trees conflue, uh, fuse together in the same domain, together with her arms and her hair. So, Kathy, your comments. What What did you think about? Well, this one's uh, the flowers whispers. It's telling you a story about a person in search of you know, her sexuality. Super. Yeah. Super. Excellent. Excellent. Now, this is another captain of ours. And this is very intriguing. This is very intriguing. This is a centaur. Right, Catherine? Yes. This is a centaur. Center of is a bold young male who is about who is dreaming or he is intending to abduct a female. Female is very female is sort of sitting to me as I see it in the tub of water and she is very vulnerable. She is defenseless, she is lyrical, she is sentimental. She is Biblical Susanna. This is trans version of biblical story of Susanna and old man. This is not an old man. He's young man. He's a centaur. It's certainly it's certainly a transposition of these biblical tunes and biblical themes into perhaps artist's personal perception or personal experience. As she says, sexuality plays a big part. In, in, ex, in artistic expression, not only of her own, but past, for practically every single artist living on earth. Um, and sexuality is, sexuality is something that is putting conflict of existence for the development of our so-called divine primordial force. So sexuality is good or sexuality? Sexuality is excellent. And yet sexuality can provide a lot of conflicts in our life. And this conflict wants to be solved. And this conflict is saying to God, God, I want to know the truth. What am I really all about? Give me the answer. And I cannot express in words what is the conflict but I will show you it in painting. That makes sense? Yes. Kathy, your, your This work. one's called Awaiting Your Arrival. In the background there's a tarot card. The tarot card is about friendship and sharing. And uh, it's about a, a young woman waiting for the, the right person to come along. Very interesting. Now this is very lyrical. This is very lyrical. You on on upon the first glance you don't see much. You see a figure and you see the oval. Oval is from Jungian perspective. Perspective is a self. So this is all about self. The oval is again in a yellow in the yellow Amari, right? Amari yes. in Spanish. Uh, perspective. 
not unlike might be Salvador Dali also. Salvador Dali loved yellow perspective. So something of that Spanish legacy might be rising of universal archetypical unconsciousness. What is very touching in this figure is actually what Michelangelo called, guys, please, 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 it's not a kindergarten. What guys, what Michelangelo called emotional momentum. This is emotional momentum. Look, I feel the motion. It's not the motion of her body, it's motion of her spirit, it's motion of her soul. I am defenseless. It's 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 a it's a very, very, very intangible moment in time and space. The breathing of your delicate soul. Very touching. It's very lyrical, Catherine. Thank you. Would you like to? This one's called Faithful Companion. Uh -huh. It's about a woman and her dog. They're, she's lost in thought. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot in, in most people's life, you know, not knowing kind of which way to go mm -hmm. from, from this point. Mm -hmm. So it's just many lost in thought. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Congratulations, Henry. Proceed me into another stage. All right. Very little jammed over here. This is remarkable. This is remarkable, Catherine Tavares. Absolutely remarkable. One of your most parthenogenetic paintings, Catherine. Catherine, one of your most parthenogenetic paintings, this one. Thank you. It has elements of absolutely everything. It's multi-figured. It's, the composition is very mesoscenic. It's like a King Lear, William Shakespeare, mixed with elements of William Blake. It's more, it's, it has Spanish grotesque, it's not English. It's, it has elements of conflict between Henry VIII, King of, King of England, and Catherine of Aragon, his wife, when they went to the court. It's got very English-Spanish grotesque. Altogether, so multi, so allegorical and so multi-dimensional and multi-compositional that taking my breath away. This is just a work which will never be forgotten in the face of history, in the face of time and space, will and fate. And this is very parthenogenetic, Catherine. So it's a very, exi very exi not existential, uh, epitomized, amid epitomized Catherine Tavares. Kathy, would you like to tell us what did you see when you painted or what did you see after you painted? Because creative process cannot be described. I just cannot tell you, right? <laughs> what do I paint? Sometimes <laughs> after you painted it, next morning you look at it and inside of this green, also red, it's revival of life and revival of love. And perspective, Catherine tells us we got a hope. This one's called Juncture. Juncture? Juncture, yeah. So uh, sometimes you reach a, a point in life where it's uh, di difficult to conceive, but you still have the hope. You see, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, little kids wishing on those little, uh, little puffs that sometimes float around. And that's what that is, like a wishful thinking on uh, wanting to, uh, you know, have more children, but you know, having difficulties also on that. And she has a mask that she's removing the smile of yes. the desperation. The mask that she has to wear every day to present, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is her two face. Right? Yes. There's sadness and there's the happy face that you have to present, right. you know. That's over here. I see some here. It is. Yeah. 
What are those blue, uh, just the clouds, the one is coming from her ear? Oh, it's like how you can see, uh, you can see through it. It's almost like a like a window. And uh, with the with the clouds, it's mostly again, you know, thoughts. And you know, she's a dreamer. It's wonderful. Thank you. She's a dreamer in the computerized world. She has her vision. Yes, this reality makes sense, mm -hmm. but in deep inside, we're not what people see. Yes. And the flower is fading away because too much water. Yes. How do I further? Yes. Alright, this is I want to just to do a little a little cute thing. This is a book published in Italy about most famous artists of all time. As you see on a on the face of the book is Goya's painting Saturn, one most famous of Francisco de Goya. Okay. As you open the book And you and you see the Saturn, Francisco de Goya. Next to the Saturn is you see Alexander Kanevsky, one of one of well most well known my work at this time, Queen uh, Queen Queen um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. So as proud I am to be in this book with Goya, as proud I am to be here in this gallery with offspring of Goya, <laughs> Catherine Tavares. This is Queen Esther. When I was in France in a nightclub and nobody knew I was there, I saw the film Kanevsky painting Queen Esther playing in a nightclub with a huge crowd of people, huge music on the ceiling. And you could see, mm -hmm. if you go Kanevsky Queen Esther on YouTube, that film how I painted it, with, with uh, Hollywood director Eddie Bernard coming to this very space, filming it up. As proud I am to be here with Catherine Tavares. Mm. Thank you. And now you all guys take pictures and put on your Facebooks Catherine Tavares and Alexander Kanevsky. Okay, this will be a great work. I'm very proud. Catherine, I'm very proud of you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to familiarize with your work, Kathy. Your work Thank is you. remarkable. <laughs> so, anybody has any questions? My friends, thank you so much for coming in, by the way. It's great to see all of you today. Thank you. Any questions for me? Yes. What inspires you? Where do you get your inspiration from? A lot of times, uh, music, life itself, experiences, and uh, other artists also. And who are your favorite artists? Again? You're my favorite artist. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a friend also that uh, she she draws. I got a lot of my uh, my uh, everything that that I do draw. I got a lot from her. She, uh, she did teach me a few things here and there. We're actually self-taught artists, and it was difficult, so we would just teach each other. And other artists that I see, uh, I don't know the name specifically, but as you, you know, browse through Facebook, you see different ones. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Thank you, honey. Uh, okay, so let me, Catherine, with your permission, because it's your night tonight. Can I, can I ask you a favor if I can offer our lovely audience, friends, very important people today with us, to show th the works of some other artists? Yes. Is so that okay? Yes. Okay. But remember, it's Catherine night. I just want to show you my collection, as a part of the uh, second part of presentations, of contemporary and modern artists all throughout the world. Let me show, let me start from here. As you understand, as you understand well, I'm not only for figurative art, 
I certainly treasure figure of art, but I see when I see some talent and some ideas, hey, some ideas with more abstract themes. I certainly I, I like it. And for example, this is an interesting story. This is a contemporary American boy whose name is Daniel Klein. He's now been shown. He's now been known to anybody. We used to meet in a, in a, in a dining area at some at some place for a while, and he we would always say hello to each other. Then he all of a sudden came up to me and he began confessing about himself, telling me about his life, that he plays guitar. And I said, "What else do you do, Daniel?" He says, "I like to draw and I like to paint." I said, "Well, show me your work sometimes." He brought me his portfolio. And this is one of the things that I picked up from there. I thought, interesting perspective, interesting visions. He is not, meta, he is not even metaphorical, he is not, he, but he is metaphysical, certainly. He, I don't, he draws, he knows how to draw. This is not figurative piece. But remarkable enough, Daniel Klein is now selling like crazy. All it took for me to pick up his work Right, couple of things. Daniel is being, as you know, for um, he after after he appears with my remark. So you have a magic all over the globe, magic all over the globe. Huh? You have a magic Midas touch? No, no, no magic. Nothing magic, my friend. <laughs> critics of by critics of four continents, I am defined and published as most important artist in the world. So, so you made him famous, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's nothing has to do with magic. It has to do with me saying that Daniel Klein is a remarkable artist, selling like crazy, and this is one of his words that I collected. Proceeding forth. Mikhail Yu, academician of, of Russian Academy of Sciences and Arts, one of his early work. In fact, this guy is remarkable. He's a founder of rap, in, in, in reality, founder of rap music in the world. He has written a rap music back in the 50s. Mikhail Yub. Now he's, in his, it, he's around 80 years old, am I right? Yeah, so this is one of his works. This work also, of, uh, this is my Russian corner. This is work of Tatiana Slavinsky, contemporary American artist. She derives from Clint, from Clint. Alessandra Trani, contemporary Italian artist, very famous. As you look at this painting, you might not see much. Why is this guy so famous? You got a C. And you got a sky. Alessandro Trani is an attorney, he's a lawyer in Rome. He began painting about 10 years ago, and all he paints is a line of horizon. Line of horizon. There's sea of different color, sky of different color, and yet Alessandro Trani represented Italy and World's Art in Milan Expo 2015, for example, where the whole world was in Milan. And, and the best things created by human beings being in Milan, including art. Because Alessandro Trani is the first in history of art who ever has painted a line of horizon. Jenny Pompa, if you open the Bible of art, uh, catalog of modern art, Giorgio Mondadori, where the major art investors in the world goes to find out who is that we should invest into. Investment means we put our uh, humongous sums of money and we expect a lot of money in return. And we will, we will receive this return of money. This is the only source where you go called Catalog of Modern Art, Giorgio Mondadori, Italian edition. Gen you would see on the back cover of the whole thing, Jenny Pompa. G all Jenny Pompa does is painting trees, 
But uniquely enough, every single, as you see, every single leaf of a tree he puts by different application of separate colors. Um, Kirsten Hurst, artist from Denmark, has different style. You see elements of this style in some artworks of Contemporanea, and yet you don't see anything like Kirsten Hurst. Kirsten Hurst was a star of uh, largest in the world figurative art exhibition, figurative art exhibition, as a matter of fact, called Palermo Biennale, which is in Palermo, Italy. This is also another interesting case. This. Yes, this Iowa Tiger, Iowa Tiger, painted by 16 years old American girl, Catherine, Caitlin Cosgrove. The same story as Daniel Klein. Kat Caitlin Cosgrove is known all over the world now, and she's selling like crazy. I use this phrase, selling like crazy, magical power of Konevsky. <laughs> this is work that I'm still trying to find out who painted that and how it appeared in my collection, I don't know, but it's so <laughs> lovely. <laughs> this is Patrizia Canola, another Italian painter. She is contemporary. Uh, she also likes to paint trees, and as you say, trees are breaking and falling down. It's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of emotion, is that right? Kath Yes. A lot of emotion. And this is probably most famous of contemporary artists. This one. His name is Maura Capitani. He is professor, another professor of Italian Academy of Fine Arts. He started began painting at the age of nine. When he was 11 years old, he was taken to Picasso. He showed his work to Picasso, and Picasso was about 90 years old. Picasso said, you keep painting, young man. You, you have talent. So we had uh, a few years ago his uh, uh, monumental exhibition, and, and he presented probably about 85 of his works of different periods of time, anthological exhibition. And he says, Look at this one. This is what I've shown to Picasso when he was 11 years old. So, Mauro Capitani. Uh, this is Joe Esposito. Joe Esposito is director of New Renaissance. He's a director of New Renaissance. American branch, a revival of color. As you know, we have new renaissance in the world right now. world is moving into re, um, reviving what was called renaissance. And uh, the formation and artistic movement is called new renaissance, of which I'm a founder. And I'm, and I'm celebrated and, and named and published in Italy as founder of New Renaissance in the world. Joe Esposito is an American artist, and he is right now president of American branch of New Renaissance, one of his early works. Joe Esposito began working together with Andy Warhol. They were rising together, Joe and Andy. Some force have de have uh, deployed Joe, and Joe got lost in time and space, and for about 30 years he was in the complete shade. And he was uh, practically lost. He came to me as a gray-haired man, and I said, Joe, I've heard of your work back in the 80s. So he showed him, shown me a body of his work, and uh, now if you go YouTube and you go Joe Esposito, you'll see the whole YouTube is Joe Esposito. And Joe, again, selling very well. Joe Esposito, one of his very early works, as you see, primitive in form, but it's very touching. And he's got a lot of colors going on. And who else do I have in this room? Oh, and, and quite, oh, I'm the cloud. 
I'm sorry guys, I gotta have to drive you back into that road. Here we have Domenico Comforte, you already saw him. Domenico Comforte is a metaphysical expressionist. He is a good figurative painter. He chooses not to do not to do real figures. This is his style. You could see a film Del Siva Natura. Uh, where, you know, our world is standing right now for reviving uh, natural resources in the world. Italy is stamping forth, uh, pioneering in this movement. And, um, and they put forth a power of art in the palace created by Michelangelo in Florence. They put two exhibitions, one of a renowned Tuscany artist, Dominica Comfort and another of myself to move and it's called Del Sivanatur. You can see a lot of work of Dominica Comfort uh, he, if, you, if you look him up on the internet. Dominica. He's another director of Renaissance, New Renaissance in Italy right now. And finally, this is the work which I almost missed. This is Alba Claudio Medarini, also Italian artist. And this is, as you see, the lower part of a torso of a woman centering around a pelvis. Sensual. And enigmatic. Anything else, my friends? Any questions? This is concluding our I'm actually curious. Uh, how did you discover Catherine? Catherine? Yes. Catherine and I have Catherine. Catherine and I have met, and um, we don't. I will give you the details of that. But Catherine has shown me how art. Is that fair? That's fair. It's fair. <laughs> So, it's, it's, it's incidents, it's almost an accident. Anything else? Okay, so Kathy again, thank you so much. Of art that nowadays art exists and artists like Catherine is moving out consciousness both. Right, Kathy? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we as humankind would not perish. Am I right? That's but correct. we will we will employ the love and attract the love of the unconscious universe. Am I right, Kathy? Yes. <laughs> Super. Again, Kathy Tavares. <laughs>